Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to The Metal Hunter. My name is Luke, and this is Machine Head. 30 years head first against the grain. That's right. Rob Flynn started Machine Head 30 years ago on the 12th of October, 1991 at a Metallica show of all places. Now that show was opened by Queensryche, Faith No More and Soundgarden. Absolutely fucking stacked. At the time, Rob Flynn was in violence, uh, Bay Area thrash metal, absolute kings. Uh, and he decided that he wanted a bit of another outlet for himself. So he decided to start Machine Head as a side project. Obviously push came to shove, he decided that Machine Head was going to need all of his time, so he could quit violence to focus on Machine Head. He enlisted the likes of Adam Juice on bass, Logan Matter on guitar, and later Chris Contos on drums, and they put out the absolutely fucking crushing album in 1994 called Burn My Eyes. And the rest is history. So today I'm going to be looking at a little bit of history of Machine Head. I'm going to be ranking all of the albums, something that I've always wanted to do, but I've always been fucking terrified of doing. So I guess you guys want to know what my relationship with Machine Head is. Well, I actually didn't find out about Machine Head until about 1999. When I was in year six, year seven, uh, I was starting to get into metal uh, and I would get compilation CDs. Uh, and I would check out Rage, which is like a music video show that gets played on uh, national broadcast television in Australia. And I found the track from this day. Get up! Now, at the time, I was into a lot of new metal. I still am. Uh, so it was fantastic hearing a little bit more of a, a crushing style. It was a fantastic way to get into them. Um, I still love that song, I still love that album. Ever since then, I've fallen in love with Machine Head. I've got every album that they've ever released. I've seen them a bunch of times. I was even lucky enough to see them in 2009 at Varken Festival. Uh, now just check out this footage, it's absolutely insane and I was in there somewhere. Are you ready? Go! Wow! one of the best live bands in my opinion i think that obviously not everyone's going to be into this band and that's absolutely fine for me uh they're very close to my heart so machine head have been around for 30 years they've got nine studio albums a handful of live albums a stack of singles today i'm just going to rank studio albums essentially they've gone through a heap of lineup changes they have gone through a lot of different genre changes i think that a lot of people seem to think that rob flynn jumps on trends and that could be true but i find that he tends to go in and make a lot of genres better uh, and that could be just me being biased i guess we'll see We'll see when I get into this ranking. As I said, I'm really fucking nervous about this. Before I do get into the ranking, I just like gotta let you know that this is absolutely my list. This is just the way that I feel personally about these records. I have to tell you that I love pretty much every record. So now that I've gotten all that out of the way, let's get into the ranking. So number nine, Catharsis. came out in like 2018 i gotta tell you i did not like it there are a few songs on there that are passable there are some great riffs on there there are songs that i'm happy to hear live but overall it's not an album that i will ever reach for it's in my collection because i'm a completionist when it comes to my favorite bands i know that there are a lot of people who enjoy this album and that's great i love that people are enjoying my favorite band or one of my favorite bands but this album is just not for me and i don't think it was written for people like me i think that rob flynn went into it with a very specific frame of mind, but it's just not something that I want to listen to. I hope I haven't upset anyone yet. Or maybe I do. Controversy is good for, for clickbait, right? Number eight, Supercharger. I am your nightmares, true scares, that dream when you can't stop from falling, can't fight, can't run, can't stop the person you've become. This 
album came out in 2001. It's a great album. I absolutely remember loving it when it was out and when I was first getting into it. I think that some of the guitar work is a little bit thinner than previous albums. And I think obviously there's a lot more of that hip hop influence happening. I think that Rob Flynn was frustrated with a lot of what was going on, especially with his label. Uh, and he just wanted to push the boundaries as much as possible. Don't get me wrong, I fucking love this album. But I went back and listened to it recently. And to be honest with you, there's only a handful of songs on there that I absolutely like top 10 kind of tracks. And with a with a back catalogue like Machine Heads, you've got to push a couple of albums to the back. Uh, and unfortunately, Supercharger has been pushed to the back. Number seven, Unto the Locust. Now, I absolutely fucking hated this album when it came out. And I think that it's because it came off the tail end of The Blackening. So it was the next album after The Blackening. The Blackening's up there with a lot of people say that it's one of the best albums of the 2000s when it comes to at least mainstream metal. I had high expectations and when it came out, I felt like it was a little bit stunted. Going back to it over the last couple of years and really delving into the lyrical themes, um, I believe that it is pretty much a perfect album to come out after the blackening because really it's like coming out after rain and blood it's like coming out after master of puppets you're never going to be able to do something as good so you need to take it in a different direction and i think that they did they they took what they had with the blackening and previous albums and they pushed it out a little bit more the thing that i really don't like about the album is actually the the album cover i think that it's probably the weakest album cover that they've ever done but the music itself stands up to this day number six Bloodstone and Diamonds. And with this now we die. tell you that this this album was another one that really passed me by when I first listened to it. Uh, it took me multiple listens to really get behind it, but I gotta tell you, the fucking album is absolutely, it's an absolute stonker. If you're a metalhead and you enjoy this kind of music and you haven't heard this album or you may be putting it off, just go and listen to the opening track, Now We Die. It is epic, it is riff filled, it is aggressive, it's emotional, it's melodic, it's tender. It's everything that you want from heavy metal. I think that Rob and the guys in the band really hit a, a formula. They'd sat with a, a pretty solid lineup for quite a few years, so it, it felt like they were really getting along and really the juices were flowing. They definitely experimented with some really sludgy kind of riffs, especially towards the tail end of this album. You know, they really hit a stride, especially with their, with their lineup. They didn't have any lineup changes for a few albums before this. Uh, so it's, it was fantastic to see that they could come out with an absolutely crushing album and sound really cohesive while doing it. Number five, Through the Ashes of Empires. album came out in 2003 and it absolutely fucking floored me around that time just after 2001 when supercharger came out there was a lot of turmoil with roadrunner records the single crashing around you from supercharger was pulled from tv and radio they kind of had a false start with that record rob went away uh aru luster left the band uh and then he pulled in phil demel who he was in the band with violence with when he left to Machine Head. And they made a fucking absolutely epic, incredible album. The thing with Through the Ashes of Empires is this could be this could be my number one. The thing with Machine Head is on any given day, pretty much any of their albums could be my favorite, especially in these top five or six. Through the Ashes of Empires came out right at the tail end of me being in high school. It was muscular and aggressive and sweet and tender. And there was a lot of emotional moments. Rob really laid his his soul bare on this one with the lyrics especially so it was absolutely amazing to see them back to a, an early form of a more vicious hard-edged style of metal yeah 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 the blackening is not actually my favorite album from machine head but it is number four on my ranking Blackening came out in 2007. Now this album is so important to me. Absolutely 
flawless pretty much. Now this album came out at a really important time in my life. I met my wife in 2007. I was becoming the man that I am today, you know, starting to learn who I was as an adult. And this album had lyrical content that really spoke to me. Uh, you know, as a singer in a couple of bands and a lyricist, I always go to the lyrics. I always try and check them out as much as possible. I feel like on the blackening, Rob Flynn hit that real Hetfield level of prose and, you know, lyrical prowess and his ability to purvey anger and emotion. And, you know, that's what metal's all about, I believe. It's about the most extreme emotions that you can get out. Uh, and I think that Rob really pushed it. The performances on, these, on this album was fucking flawless. You know, you had Phil Demel on guitars, Dave McLean on drums, Adam Juice on bass with backing vocals. And the vocal harmonizing between Adam Juice and Rob Flynn hit an absolute peak on this album. In fact, I'm going to stop recording this, this video and I'm going to go and listen to that album. Number three, Burn My Eyes, 1994. <laughs> can change sometimes two and three are mostly interchangeable actually two three and four are pretty interchangeable for me it just really depends that's the lovely thing about machine head is that they have a style for pretty much any mood that you, you're in but at this point after re-listening to the albums quite a bit burn my eyes sits at number three it'd probably be up in the top 10 debut albums of all time when it comes to the genre of heavy metal. A absolute fucking war statement of an opening track, Davidian. Obviously in, in the 90s, you know, groove metal was happening and, and Machine Head kind of jumped on that and they rode that wave with the with the likes of Pantera and Crowbar and x Order, and they really lived through the golden age of Roadrunner Records. They enjoyed success along with bands like Typo Negative and Fear Factory, of course. Now listening to this album there isn't a dud really there's not a track that i need to skip there's nothing that i need to fast forward there's nothing that makes me cringe it's absolute fire from start to finish it's not my top album it's a great album but it's not my number one and it's not my number two not at the moment at least well number two the more things change I found a way to break the on Roadrunner Records once again. Now, this album has grown on me like a cancerous cyst. When I first listened to it, I was not really not really sold straight away. And I think that that's the beauty of Machine Head. You know, there's so many things about them, so many subtleties and nuances uh, that kind of grow on you, especially if you give it time. But the more things change, took me a little while to get into. You know, obviously I enjoyed their singles, of this album, but it took a little while for me to really understand what Rob and his band were doing. And this is one of the most disgusting feeling albums I've ever listened to. I've listened to it on every kind of sound system, every kind of headphone I can find. And every single time that I listen to it, I always feel like I need to take a shower after it. It is sludgy, it is doomy, it is moody and bluesy. It's absolutely filthy. It's the fucking dirt under your fingernails. It is heavy as fuck. Of course, opening the album with 10 Ton Hammer, it's like wanting to fight God. It's so good. So we're down to number two, the more things change. That obviously just leaves one more album. And I knew this was gonna be controversial, but I knew what I loved in my heart. And so next up is my number one. That's right, The Burning Red. The Burning Red is my number one Machine Head album of all time. It's in my top 10 albums ever. I absolutely love this album. Rob Flynn recently was in an interview and he spoke about it, you know, the, the longevity of Machine Head and the errors of Machine Head. And he spoke fondly about The Burning Red. Now The Burning Red was recorded around the same time that Slipknot recorded their first album. So Rob Flynn became really good friends with all of the Slipknot guys, which is fantastic. And some of the Slipknot guys are actually on this album, which is fucking awesome. Rob Flynn has also said that this is their stoner album. Uh, which is probably why I enjoyed it so much in high school. I am absolutely in love with this record. I know that this is where they started going into the new metal style of things, but to me, this is the perfect balance between both worlds of the old version of Machine Head and then that second era of Machine Head, that new metal version of them. I don't have a bad word to say about this record. It will forever be 
deep within my heart, within the black, cold abscess of my heart, where all my favorite metal records go, that's where it's going to be. So that was my ranking of Machine Head albums. Now, before I go, I better talk about a bit of controversy around Machine Head and Rob Flynn. Uh, obviously, Pantera is my favorite band of all time. There was a situation a couple of years back where Rob Flynn called out Phil Anselmo from Pantera. I think that Rob was right in what he did. I think that he was right to call out people for things that he believed in. Uh, I think that that's a really important thing to do, especially within extreme music, whether it be punk or hip hop or metal or fucking whatever it is. There is a lot of extremity and a lot of assholes out there. I'm not saying that Phil Anselmo is an asshole. I think that Rob stuck to his guns. He knew what he needed to say and he said it. I believe that Phil and Rob have since made up, which is great to hear. And, you know, Phil has made amends uh, and moved forward and apologized about everything. So that's great. If you believe in something, I think you need to stick up for your beliefs. Now that I'm finished, now that I stumbled through all of that, now that I was mumbling and fucking acting like a dickhead, what did you guys think? Did I get this completely wrong? Did you want to hear more rankings? Let me know what bands you want me to rank down below. All right, with all of that out of the way, that is Machine Head ranked. Holy fuck. I am sweating. I am still not 100% sure if that's exactly the way that I would rank them every single day, um, but that's pretty much how I feel right now. That's the wonderful thing about music is you can change your mind and fucking who cares? You just enjoy what you enjoy. How did I do? Let me know down below in the comments if you like this ranking style thing. Obviously with bands that have quite a big back catalog, it can take a little while to get through them, but I think that I will be ranking more albums in the future. But next week, I've got a new video coming out for you. So make sure that you like the video. Make sure that you subscribe make sure that you drop me a comment and let me know who you want me to rank next i'm willing to listen to pretty much anyone within the metal genre and i'm happy to listen to bands that i've never heard before or bands that i absolutely love you know when it comes to bands that i don't know i i want to do a deep dive into them so it might take me a little bit longer be sure to follow me on all social medias that is facebook instagram twitter and i am also on twitch i haven't started streaming again but i'm going to get back into that next week once my schedule for work calms down you know how it is trying to do everything at once anyway i've been luke the metal hunter i'm gonna see you next time bye take this weakness that cuts like a knife let's smash it oh.